The Guild Wars 2 Festival of the Four Winds is full of fun events you can do and a lot of unique items and skins you can buy, including some brand new that were only added this year. So in this guide we will cover everything you need to know about the festival in a quick and simple way. There are two maps that contain pretty much everything related to the festival. The first one is the Crown Pavilion and the second one is the Labyrinthian Cliffs. The easiest way to go there is to find those hot air balloons icons on the map and when you talk to the vendor he can take you to one of the festival maps. The easiest locations for them are the ones in Divinity's Reach and you will find them very close to the Crown Pavilion waypoint. The second location is in Lion's Arch besides the Claw Island waypoint. You can also enter the Crown Pavilion by going to the Crown Pavilion waypoint and you will find a portal taking you there right in front of the waypoint. You can participate in the festival on any level, so even if you are a brand new player to the game, you can still participate in the festival and do most of what I will show you now without any problem. We will start by covering everything in the Crown Pavilion map and then we will do the cliffs afterwards. The main rewards you will get from this map, even just by killing mobs, will be the festival tokens and the Queen's Gauntlet tickets. The festival tokens can be used to buy plenty of items as I will show you later, and the gauntlet tickets can also be used to fight certain champions for achievement and rewards and again I will show you this as we go. The main thing that happens around the map here is an event called the boss splits. You will notice the map is divided into multiple sections and in each one of them there will be a champion you will need to kill. There is a timer for the event and the faster you are the higher the rewards will be. The rewards will include the festival tokens, the gauntlet tickets, some unidentified gear and a total of 10 champion bags if you manage to finish the event in the gold tier. Once you kill any of the bosses they will transfer their special ability to the rest of the bosses and so to make it easier for everyone try to coordinate in the map with other players and kill all bosses together as close as possible however these days killing those bosses is really easy and there's not a lot of coordination required before the boss blitz event starts you will notice there is a bar that fills up and only when it's completely filled is when the event will start. You can fill this bar by doing the race, which will spawn right after the event, and you can also fill that bar by killing mobs in any of the sections, which is also a very good way to get some extra loot and some extra tickets and tokens. You can also do the race by talking to the time trial NPC, and it will work exactly the same way. One thing I would recommend when you are doing the race is before you reach the pirate section and start going above the ship, try to use maybe your griffin or your sky scale or your springer because it's going to make your life easier navigating that part and then when you are done with it if there are no enemies around you to keep you in combat you can go back to your raptor or something if you don't have any mounts you can talk to the raptor rental npc here and you can rent one for 10 silvers now i will give you a quick rundown for what to be careful with for each of the champions cc's will be important for any boss you will fight so make sure you will have enough cc's to break bar very quickly for sparacus he will spawn in this area of the map. He will constantly teleport between platforms and he will knock people back and you can then fall into the lava and take a lot of damage. So stability and stun breaks will be very important here. He will also frequently get a fire shield that reflects projectiles. And so during that shield, try to avoid hitting him from range otherwise you will end up killing yourself. In this part of the map, you will fight Boom Boom Banes. The boss will summon a healing turret that will keep healing her. So make sure to destroy it as soon as you see it. The other thing to pay attention to is the big red AOE. This is going to do a lot of damage and it will knock back, so always try to get out of them as soon as possible. In this section, you will fight Hablion. Pay attention to any white AOE rings on the ground, they will keep expanding and if you get hit by them, this will teleport you to a random place in the section. Next, he is going to have a big wind up attack and he will have a break bar during it. If you did not break bar, he will pull players into him and he is going to do big damage. So either try to break bar very quickly or dodge out of his attack as fast as you can. In this section, you will fight a big destroyer boss called Pyro. The boss will get enraged a couple of times in the fight, and when he does, he will do a lot of damage. And so during that time, just try to kite him and stay alive and avoid the damage. Once the enrage is over, you can come back and continue fighting him normally. He's also going to spawn a fan of flames that will spread out on the ground, and it will hit very hard. So whenever you see those, try to avoid him immediately. In this section, you will fight Wiggins. The only thing to worry about with Wiggins is 
is his reign of bombs. And so anytime you see big red AoEs on the ground, try to avoid them immediately because they will do a lot of damage. And the last boss will be Kurai, which is a center that will keep running around. And as he runs, he will knock you back in his path. You can stay behind and range him until he stops and then you can damage. There will also be a lot of other centers that will keep trampling you on the way, so also try to avoid them and stability here will be very useful. Also in the crown pavilion, you will notice those floating arenas. And this is where you can do the next big thing in the crown pavilion, which is to fight the gauntlet champions. And this is where having those tickets can be very useful, because you will need those tickets to fight those champions. Also keep in mind that if you are not interested in fighting those champions at all, you can sell those tickets for some extra profit. To start fighting the gauntlet champions, go to one of those arenas and you will see a lot of ramps leading up to it. There are multiple arenas spread around the map. All of them will work exactly the same way. So just try to find an arena that is empty with not that many players around it and choose it to start fighting those champions. Besides each one of those arenas, there will be a fight manager, a ring master, and a master of gambits. From the fight manager is where you can choose which boss do you want to fight and there are a total of three tiers and then a special tier that will be harder. Once you choose any of the bosses here, you will find a buff on your bar saying which boss you choose to fight. Once you have that buff, go talk to the ring master and basically you will be queuing to fight next in this arena. The master of gambits is going to give you some debuffs which will make the fight harder on you. Some of them are going to be easier to deal with than others. There are some achievements that are related to activating certain gambits when you are fighting the champions. Each fight will come with a two minute timer. If you did not kill the champion before that time, you will die. And if that happened, or you just simply got downed during any point of the fight, you will be teleported back here beside the arena and you will be revived and you can continue without any issues. Right beside those vendors, there will be another NPC that will give you the armor buff which will reduce the damage and increase your health so this can be very useful when you are fighting the champions also the jade offensive and defensive protocol buffs work while you are fighting those champions and so if you stack those buffs on top of the reinforced armor this is going to help you significantly in fighting the champions the easiest location for that is to go to the wizard's tower map and then come here to this location and you will find a charging station where you can charge your batteries to the maximum and then interact with those buffs. The queen's gauntlet has a lot of achievements that it has its own section dedicated to it in the festival tab. So come here and check all of those achievements and if you finish all of them this can give you plenty of achievements. Aside from the achievement points from the gauntlet champions if you want to maximize your rewards when you are fighting them you should only fight each champion only once per day. You will get 14 tokens for each one of the bosses in tier 1 and then 21 for tier 2 and then 28 for tier 3 and a special tier. Most of those champions are pretty straightforward and easy to fight and if you are using any of my open world builds it will work very well with all of those champions. Generally speaking for all of the bosses in all tiers having some CCs will be very good to interrupt and break their bar whenever it's ready. On top of that there are a couple of bosses that have some special mechanics you need to be aware of. In tier 1 when you are fighting Suriel she is going to be invulnerable at first. Wait for for her to summon the black pools and then stand in them to grant yourself a buff otherwise you will take very heavy damage and then also try to aggro her into those pools. Once she steps in them you will remove her buff and then you can damage her and kill her very quickly. In tier 2 when you are fighting Masticos, you will find red orbs spread around the arena. Those are actually buffs for you, they will increase your damage, so collect them as you go. And also in tier 2, when you are fighting Salazan, he is going to lock you down in a ring of fire. You actually will not take that much damage as long as you are not on the edges. And if you try to dodge or teleport out of it, you are going to go instantly down. So stay inside that ring and wait for him to come to you and then you can damage him. Or wait for the ring to expire and then you can move freely. In tier 3, subject 7, which is the ooze, will not move. And so you can just keep ranging him while kiting the small ooze if they are causing any problem. For the dead die he will spread mines along the ground that will hit very hard, so try to avoid stepping into them. And he will start with an attack from a long range that will do a lot of damage. Also try to block it or dodge it somehow. For Struger and his pet, the objective is to kill Struger as fast as you can. 
the pet is not as important. It will still do damage and it will still be harmful, but you can just try to kill Struger very quickly. Leadri is going to be tricky to deal with. I highly suggest you bring a build that will give you a decent amount of passive heals. She is going to be completely invulnerable at the beginning, and you will notice on her bar there will be three buffs. As the fight progresses, she is going to constantly summon clones that will keep moving towards you. If those clones touch you, you will immediately go down. You will also notice there will be a white AoE on the ground. Try to pull those clones into that white pool, and they will immediately die, and they will spawn an orb. Grab that orb and throw it at Liadri. Once you do that three times and remove her three buffs, you can then start immediately damaging her. She is also going to summon rifts that are going to pull from a very long range. So once you see those rifts, you need to immediately destroy them. In the special tier, when you are fighting the master of lightning, he is going to frequently lock you down in a lightning cage. If you try to dodge or teleport out of it, you will go down. So just stay inside and wait for him to come to you and then you can damage him. Or wait for the cage to expire and then you can move around as much as you want and kite him and kill him. For the second boss in the special tier, Palia, she is going to spawn a big red AoE. When you stand in it, you will see a special action key. When you use it, this is going to basically grab a sword and it will throw it at her to do a lot of damage. You will fight Suriel again in the special tier and this time she is going to summon a bunch of bows. You need to kill them as fast as you can because if three of them are present at the same time, you will get constantly immobilized and it will be a problem. The hardest boss from all of them is the last one in the challenge tier which is King Turai. He is going to do a lot of damage and he is going to have a lot of mobility. It will be very hard for you to move around him and so you you will need a build with a lot of dodges and blocks if possible. He is also going to frequently apply some buffs to himself including 25 stacks of might and quickness. And so boon strips against him are going to be very important and anytime he has those boons try to remove them immediately. Aside from the boons he will give himself he has also two buffs on his bar. One of them that will give him a lot of sustain, the other one will enable him to do a lot of damage. You can only remove one of those buffs at a time and to do that wait for him to go to the middle of the area arena and then break his bar. So basically when you do that twice you remove both buffs and then you can fight him without too much problems. From the crown pavilion you can talk to the festival traveler and you can go to the Labrensian cliffs map. The main event for this map is the treasure hunt and it happens at specific times. I will leave the timer for them in the description below. The event is divided into three rounds and for each round you need to collect as much loot as possible. When you finish all three rounds go to this sky docks waypoint and then after a few seconds while the NPCs give a speech they will spawn an effigy. You cannot use your normal skills to kill him. You have to grab water balloons and use it on the effigy. And after you kill him, this will give you some extra rewards. The loot you collect for the treasure hunt event can actually be used to make some profit. On the west side of the bazaar docks waypoint, you will find this treasure hunt vendor. From here, you can exchange the bundles of loot you collected with other rewards. This will include some kites as novelty items you can use and a mini. Or if you want pure profit, you can buy champion bags, each one will cost 50 bundles of loot which is actually not hard to get at all. The main reward from all the events here in this map will also be the festival tokens. The main currency for both maps Crown Pavilion and the Cliffs will be the festival tokens and this is what you will need to buy pretty much almost everything. Also from the daily you will find a new tab for the festival of the four winds. When you finish the four winds daily this will give you a mystic coin which sells for a very good price right now. And then Traveler of the Four Winds requires you to kill three champions for any of the maps, which should be very easy to do. You can even do it while you're doing fractals, for example. And this will give you this Four Winds prize bag, which also sells for a decent price on the trading post. One of the dailies will give you Favor of the Bazaar. And another daily will give you Favor of the Pavilion. Once you have both of them in your inventory, just double click and it will convert into Favor of the Festival, which is also another item you will need need to buy some unique items and skins throughout the festival. Now let's look at all the festival vendors and what exactly can you buy from them. And the best place for that is the Bazaar Docks and the Librensian Cliffs map. The first vendor we will look at is the Festival Rewards vendor. This is the main vendor for the festival and you can buy a lot of items from here. Heavy crafting bags are the most profitable items because they will give you tier 6 materials. Tomes of knowledge are very good if you are trying to level alt characters. There are two items here you don't see on my screen because I have already bought them before. They are 
gift of quartz and gift of sprockets. Those will spawn some nodes in your home instance, and they will allow you to gather sprockets and quartz from your own home instance. You can also buy the crate obelisk chart, which will allow you to charge your quartz crystals. And again, this item is not showing up here because I have already bought it in the past. On top of that, there are plenty of skins here that can be very good. Just right click and preview any of them and see if you like it and if it will work well with your fashion. In the second tab, you will find some items you can buy using the festival tokens and laurels. They will also include other items and skins you can right click and preview anytime you want. From the first tab, you have a lot more rewards you can buy using the festival tokens and favor of the festival. This will include some wind catcher backpack skins. In my opinion, they are one of the best in game. And you will also have a recipe for the Zephyrite fish jerky. And this item can be very useful, especially if you do a lot of fishing, because this will give you the fishing party buff very quickly. Each time you consume it, it will give you 25 stacks of the fishing party. However, you must be on a skiff and that skiff must be anchored. This also doesn't count as a food or utility consumable, which means you can have the sushi food with it while you are doing your fishing. The festival weekly vendor is going to sell some very unique items and you can only buy them once per week. This includes a sun grown chest that you can buy that will include some chests you can select from. And those skins are not bad at all. You can just right click and preview all of them, see if you like any of them, and then you can buy it. The chest of legendary charts is only useful if you are going for generation 2 legendary weapons. The Terrian exchange voucher will give you an item in your inventory. When you double click, you can select one of some currencies as it may otherwise be a little harder for you to get. Here also in the cliffs map, you will find a bunch of trader vendors. Each one of those vendors will deal with different type of materials. So this one for example will be for scrap stuff, while this one will be for wood, and this one will be for metal ore and so on. Most of the time, when you open those different boxes, the rewards from them will not be very good at all. The only reason you may want to buy those Zephyrite boxes is the super rare items because they include some skins that can sell for thousands of gold. For example, you can get the festive confetti infusion and the chuck infusion along with the queen bee, all of which sell for an extremely high price on the trading post. But again, keep in mind that those items are super rare and there is an incredibly low chance of getting them. You can get those same boxes by running the festival of the four winds reward track in PvP or Waldus's vault. When you finish the reward track, this will give you a total of 28 of those boxes. And in my opinion, that is not enough and it's not worth running this reward track for it. Because you don't get any Mr. Clovers and you don't get Memories of Battle, which also sells for a very decent price on the trading post. Sparking Stone will sell you some unique skins that are only available during the festival. And once more, you can right click preview all of those skins to see if you will like them or not. Each one of them will cost 4 gold and 1000 festival tokens which should not be hard to get at all. Right beside the sparking stone vendor there is a Zephyrite weapon enchanter. From here you can buy sun blessed weapons for some gold and some festival tokens and in my opinion they are one of the best in the entire game. You will notice most of them are locked. That's because in order for you to buy any of them you must unlock the normal version of the weapon first. To do that you need blessings of the four winds and then when you have that item Double click and choose which weapon you want to unlock. So you unlock the normal skin first and then that will enable you to buy the sun blessed version. And you can get this item every time you finish 4 winds gale achievement. And to finish this achievement you need to do the 4 winds zephyr 5 times which is basically the dailies, which then will count towards four winds gale. And every time you do that five times, you will get one of those blessings of the four winds. And then you get the normal skin from here and then talk to the enchanter vendor and buy the sun blessed version of the same skin. Drobert is an NPC that you will find in every festival. And in the Festival of the Four Winds, he really doesn't sell any profitable items at all. You should only ever deal with him and buy some stuff if you want the Spectral Hand achievement. Now I will show you another unique vendor in the Crown Pavilion map. If you go to the Sky Docks Waypoint in the Cliffs map, and then go to this hot air balloon icon, just talk to the vendor and he will get you to the Crown Pavilion. In here, you will find the Sovereign Weapons vendor. To buy them, you will require some gold and one favor of the festival for each one of the weapons. And remember, to get this favor of the festival, you need favor of the pavilion, 
and favor of the bazaar in your inventory and then double click and it will be converted into favor of the festival. Once you unlock any of those skins, you can also buy the upgraded version of it, which is the divine sovereign weapon. And you can right click and look at them to see if you like any of them and if they are worth the upgrade for you. There are other unique skins you can get during the festival, like the watch work skins. And again, you can right click and see all of them to see if you like any of them. You can get those skins from the four wins prize bags, which you can get by killing champions daily. But of course, those are rare drops and they are not common. Also, you can find those weapons directly on the trading post if you like any of them and you don't want to gamble. And then as you finish the four wins custom achievement, you will get the sand swept chest. When you double click, it will open this window and you can choose any of those unique skins. You can right click to preview and see if you like any of them. And those are some of the unique skins that were added very recently with the festival this year. You will find plenty of other good rewards from the achievements. And so I highly recommend going to the festival tab, looking at each one of those achievements and most of them will be very easy to complete and you will just get some titles, you will get some rewards and such. Also, during the festival in pretty much all of the core Terria maps you will find those Zephyrite kite baskets. When you open those baskets this will give you some quartz crystals and there are also achievements that are related to them including potentially a daily. I hope you found this guide useful and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next guide.